Assalamu alaikum. Hello everyone. Welcome to Dr. Uh, <laughs> welcome to my show which is um, Tuesdays with Dr. T. So today we are going to be talking about a loaded topic. Okay? It's about money. Why is it a loaded topic? Because it's always in the forefront of our mind and I am planning on making this into a series of how I budget, how I um, make sure that I am buying healthy food and I'm buying all the stuff that I need to buy to be able to help my child, to be able to lead a healthy life, to be able to lead a life that's chemical and toxin and stuff free, okay? And for those of you who are more inclined to Bangla, I will be making a Bangla episode for you guys as well, okay? So today it's it's me talking about how I managed the money I needed to be able to you know give my son Muhammad all the stuff that he needed to be able to thrive okay so it's a juicy topic it's a very interesting one because once upon a time not very long ago I was a single income family okay and we were struggling financially very very much just like you are probably right at this moment okay so let's jump into it and let's start first of all let me give a little uh, background hello nilufa yasmin how are you let me know if you are also struggling with coming up coming up with ideas on how to budget and how to make sure that you have you find the money so that you can help your child to thrive and buy all the stuff that you need to buy or get all the support that you need to get to be able to give him the 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 juicy the awesome benefit and support that your child needs to thrive okay all right so fast forward two years it was we just came back came in Canada as a new immigrant family and I was pregnant with Ira six month so definitely I wasn't looking for a job I could not find a job that would suit my condition okay so it was just on my husband to be the sole breadwinner Salamu alaikum Idris how are you doing hope you are fine so as I was saying we are going to talk about how we came how I came up with the money that I needed as a single income family so that I can I could help my child to become the best version of himself to to be able to thrive not just survive as a autism child okay all right so I was single income family mom with two kids and then pandemic hit which is still disrupt disrupting a lot of our lives okay so my husband was earning a little less than 2000 Canadian dollars for those of you who are actually living outside of um, you know a living a living outside of Bangladesh or anywhere in the world 2000 CAD is not a big amount of money it's not really a big amount of money because with that we have to pay the rent we have to pay the bills we have to buy food we have to buy clothes and we have to do so many things right all right so what i had to do was i had to first have this mindset i had to first have this mindset that i absolutely need to help my son in any shape or form in any way shape or form because when i came to canada i came with this vision that the canadian government will be taking care of my child Hello, Lindsay. How are you? Thank you so much for coming and watching me here. And also, assalamu alaikum to uh, Lucky Appu, Lucky Rahman. Okay. Thank you so much, you guys. I very much appreciate you coming in. Okay. So what I was doing was I was searching, I was searching my eyes out to find ways that I could help my son because wherever I was going, whichever doctor I was going to. They were always saying the same thing that he might not be verbal let alone have communication the way that he is right now alhamdulillah 
he might not be social he might not be having a healthy life a normal life because he was actually struggling a lot okay and somewhere deep inside of me because i am a neurodiverse myself don't forget that i know his struggle i understand his struggle i understood his struggle okay so i was like i need to find a way so that someone cuz in in quran also it's we are all we are always told by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he did not create any any disease or disorder that does not have a solution allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the quran that he did not create any disease or disorder or problem that does not have a cure or solution okay so aimed with that knowledge and aim with that mother's vision and faith that i will find a way to make him speak i will find a way to help him stop self harming help him stop being a uh, anti social uh angry you know all those disrupting qualities that he had that he had possessed that time and i sat down i sat down with my notebook with the trusty google and youtube and i started finding ways you know just like you guys might be doing so the first thing that you need to know what i did was understanding my financial situation so the first thing that you can do is understanding your financial financial situation for example you need to know how much you are earning how much tax you are paying what's your what's your income what's your net income that you are bringing home okay after all the deductions and everything so i read books i love robert kiyosaki's book you know and i love other other podcasts and um i read quite a lot of books actually i will leave the resources down below or make a blog post out of it inshallah okay so all those books told me some very common things you know the first thing is this the way we are raised and uh, brainwashed and taught and made to believe is that we are poor we are always made to believe made to believe that we are poor because we have more poverty consciousness than we have wealth consciousness we are always in the wa alaikum assalam uh, irene apu we are always in this way of scrambling for money scrambling for surviving okay but actually we have more money than we know what to do with it the main problem i found out was how i was budgeting things okay maybe i go out for for a supermarket uh, you know buying phase and then i will start picking up stuff in my car and then by the end of the shopping trip maybe i have i went there to buy 50 dollars worth of produce and stuff but i would end up buying 150 raise your hand let me know in the comment if this is landing for you if you are someone who go to the go for a shopping trip and then you come home buying 10 times more than you were planning to buy raise your hand okay you're not the only one you who do who does or did this mistake i was too i still do sometimes okay so the first thing that you need to know is how you can budget your stuff because the fact is it's not how much you earn it's how you calculate how you spend the money okay it's not how much you earn it's how you spend the money so i have a little uh, sharing i have a uh, i want to share with you guys how i budgeted so let's say after tax and everything my husband brought in about 2000 canadian dollars okay so what i would do is the first thing i chose was to stay in a very small apartment in a place which was not posh which was not trendy which was not acceptable to some of our community peoples you know i did not have friends for the longest time because i was staying in uh, gatineau which was a poor section of uh, of the city okay actually gatineau is uh, it's it's in another province the quebec and uh, and uh, ontario they are side by side okay so i came to canada as a skilled 
migrant for Ottawa. All my paperwork and everything was for Ottawa. But I, me and my husband, we chose to stay in Gatineau, which is very close to Ottawa. Why? Because that way I could, I could save a lot of money on rent. We did not have friends. There were people who literally stopped talking to us when they learned that we are staying in Gatineau because they're all from Bangladesh, by the way. All our community members. Walaikum assalam, Sufiya Apu. Thank you for coming. Okay. So all immigrant Bangladeshi Apus will resonate with what I'm saying right now. You know, we have to keep up with the Bhabis rather than keep up with the Kardashians. We have the Bhabis to keep up to, right? So I had, you know, if you see in the background, that's my closet. I forgot to close it. <laughs> okay. So what, I, what had happened was I chose to stay at a place which was not trendy, not acceptable, but it was helping me to save a lot of money because rent in Ottawa is about 1500 CAD and rent in Gatineau was 750 CAD. So as you can see, I, I saved about 50% on the rent, which I then, I then scored for my son. Okay. So if you are staying at a place which you are finding it's a little expensive, you might think about going somewhere a little uh, downsize your lifestyle, downsize your uh, the way you uh, the way you live the the place that you live. You might. I'm just suggesting. Okay, that's what I did for myself. So after that downsize, <clears throat> every month we would get about eight hundred bucks which we were we would have spent if we were outside okay so up, uh, about apart from the <clears throat> rent we got about 800 bucks which i totally poured for muhammad's food supplements okay all right so the second thing that i did that i did was because i'm a scientist myself i know which informations can be trusted and which informations cannot be trusted because a lot of the stuff that you see hear read or are told are hypes okay because whether you know this or not big corporations like pharmaceutical industries or agriculture industries can actually pay pay very well renowned scientists or very well renowned universities to produce results that you want to hear that they want to to publish because that will help their products that will help their services we are always at the hand or in the mercy of somebody bigger than us it's time you get that power back to yourself because here's the caveat personal sovereignty and financial sovereignty these are the two things that you need to be able to live the life that you deserve, that you want for yourself and your, your family, your child. As long as you play in the hands of the bigger corporations, the medical system, the financial institutes, you will always be broke. You will always be surviving or struggling. That's not what I want for my parents. That's not what I wanted for me. Okay. All right. So as I was saying, the first thing that you need to do was to have an idea, conscious idea where you are standing at this moment financially. Number two was budgeting, finding out ways to cut cost or to supplement them with more additional incomes or be creative, you know, be creative. I personally love the sales rack. I would most of the time aim to buy stuff that's at a discounted rate like 50 percent off and you know i where i learned this from i learned this from my mom my mother okay in dhaka where she is there 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 are a few bazaars you know like uh, market open marketplace because in bangladesh we have open marketplace that we call bazaar okay so my mom would consciously go to a place that was for the lower income people okay she will go there and then she will be the she will buy the most expensive thing the higher end product from the cheaper location because the price of stuffs always go depending on where where the market is situated okay if you go to a 
trendy place, the supermarkets, the places over there will be expensive. The same amount of food, the same amount of a product, the same product will be cheaper in a in a in a location or in a place which has which is not that trendy. You get the point? Okay. So I took those ideas and I would always go score the um, what is that thing called the local papers and stuff like that. They will send us uh, you know daily deals and weekly deals and things like that. I would try my best to go to the go to shopping for food early in the morning because that that's when you can get the best freshest discounted stuff okay because what happens is sometimes let's say last yesterday's produce and stuff they have to get rid of in the in today so they will mark it as 50% off or 75% off and things like that so i would go buy all of those things and then I will meal prep based on what I have bought. Okay. The next thing I did, as I was saying before going into a tangent, which happens a lot because I'm a neurodiverse. The third thing that I did was I did a lot of research to find out somebody, a doctor, who can di direct me to the proper, proper place. Okay. Okay. Because you can read hundreds of books. You can watch thousands of podcast video trainings and stuff like that. You can be member of all the top autism groups in Facebook. But then you will always be confused. Why? Because hundreds of people will give you hundreds of information for your child. And you will be like, what the F am I going to do? And which, which direction is right for me? It's really hard to find out which direction is right for you and your child. So which is why you have to find somebody who has the right knowledge, who had the, who had the right experience and who is, who are the, the, you know, group and whatnot. They're already producing the result that you want for your child. That's whom you should go. And then you should seek advice from those people, from those expertise, from those personnel and professionals. If you are going to your local uh, medical health healthcare people and then they are telling you that there is nothing you can do for your child, screw that F, screw them up, okay? Just ditch them, kick their ass if, if possible and then find the person, find the doctor, find the professional who will listen to you, who will understand you and who will help you guide to the direction that you want for yourself and your child. Because this is the truth. You can gain almost everything that you are struggling with your child right now. If your child is nonverbal, you can gain speech. If your child is self-harming, you can get a calm more understandable child if your child lacks social skills you can get that child to understand danger to understand how to how to communicate with others how to communicate with strangers how to make sure that they can protect themselves if you are struggling with a child who doesn't know how to potty train how to communicate that he or she wants to go to the toilet and whatnot you can do all of those things because we do it all of those every single day alhamdulillah it's totally possible the fact that we are always told that, you know, autism kids are destined to be disabled, it's a bullshit. It's a total bullshit. I'm sorry to use explicit. I cannot, I could not not use it. Because your child can absolutely get speech, sleep, health, behavior, communication, and even can go to a regular school. We have achieved all of those things and Alhamdulillah, we are helping others to achieve them as well. So it's totally possible. The first thing that you need to know is it's possible for yourself and your child. The second thing is finding out ways that you can understand what, where your money is coming from and where it's going. I had to write down every single, you know, income and expenditure for a few weeks to really know that where I was leaking money because you know even though you are very careful in spending money and whatnot 
there is a huge chance that you are actually wasting money somewhere okay maybe you can spend somewhere you can save from somewhere and stuff like that buy what makes most sense spend that gives you 10 times more result for example if you are short with cash and short with money and whatnot if needed invest invest in a program that will give you the best result and that will save your money your time your tension your stress and everything for the for the rest of your life that's the best that's the best option actually that's what i did because i was like if i am holding on to my child's current situation then i will be spending a lot of money on buying him new toys because he is breaking everything buying new gadgets and TVs because he is breaking everything at home finding nanny one time at a time because he cannot be handled at school or daycare because people would be like please take your child away we cannot handle him so and then me exhausted me not able to find a job or have a business or whatever so my potential income is also a loss project so all of these things I calculated and then I found out like if somehow I can, you know, spend or spare a few thousands, then I can absolutely build a different lifestyle, a different future for my child and myself. That's what I did. So I, I invite you to do the calculation that what, what is your life costing you right this moment? What is the cost of you having having a child who is not going forward, but going backward every single day? What is the cost of living a life with that? What is the cost of yours on yourself, on your sanity, on your sleep, on your happiness, on your health? Because guess what? You are a human being. You need to be happy. You need to have a life that is worth living i remember being us being a suicidal mess i remember the blackness in my head and my heart and in my life i don't want to go back i don't want even my enemy to have that life that i had two years before i don't want that for any of you which is why i come every single week every single week to tell you guys that it is totally possible to get a freedom and successful life for your child on the spectrum. It's totally possible. You have to have faith on that. Hello, George. How are you doing? Thank you for coming. And also, Assalamu Alaikum Chinapu. So all of these things are actually possible. The first thing that you need to do, I keep on saying all the time, have faith on your child and the